Okay, it's high time I do another of the thing that made this channel popular in the first place, and that is adapt some historical wardrobe favorites into stuff that can be wearable today. Although admittedly I am the worst person to be doing this because I would 300% wear a bustle gown to the grocery store, but whatever. I have long had it in my head that the late 18th century chemise a la reine would make the most wonderful, ethereal, floaty little summer dress, so this is what I shall at long last be plotting out today. Starting, of course, with the sketch. This project is very kindly sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one website development and e-commerce platform that makes building your own beautifully designed and very professional looking website super easy, but more on that anon. The chemise a la reine is made famous by Marie Antoinette, most noticeably from this portrait, after which the fashion for these daringly simple frocks exploded scandalously onto the late 18th century fashion scene. Made from fine sheer cotton muslin rather than the linen more common of actual shifts, the chemise a la reine was called so because it very suspiciously resembled the chemise, French for shift. Or or the undermost layer worn beneath the stays and was most definitely not supposed to be seen in such capacity. But it perhaps wasn't necessarily Marie Antoinette's primary intent to cause such uproarious scandal by appearing dressed this way, for what came to be known as the chemise a la reine after its European appearance on the French queen in this portrait originated as the Gaulle, or a light muslin gown worn by elite ladies of the French West Indies where such lightness in colour and material was most practical and appropriate for the climate. Sounds like the perfect basis for a whimsical and unusual summer dress to fly in perfect coolness in the face of today's incomprehensibly illogical obsession with polyester summer frocks. Spoiler alert, polyester is plastic. Plastic doesn't breathe and only makes your life supremely miserable in summer heat. Cotton, a plant fiber whose literal life purpose is to absorb moisture, is the much more practical wardrobe solution for a toasty climate. P.S. Just because something is a new technological development of the 21st century doesn't necessarily mean that history might not have actually done it better, but I digress. I've kept the length and fullness of the skirt according to the original chemise design, as well as the drawstring detail at the waist and underbust, and the silk sash accent. Red, of course. The only thing I've really changed is the sleeve and collar situation. Short floaty sleeves for this instead of the large puffy sleeves in the historical design, since I think the combination of these with a the large ruffle at the collar will read very 1980s, if not balanced with the floofy hedgehog hairstyle, which I probably won't be bothered to do on a regular 21st century summer's day. Today's Garment District Adventure is going to be very simple. I really only need some white cotton lawn, which I know exactly where to get, um, and then I need some sort of colorful contrasting silk, probably red because I'm trash. However, Noelle has texted me last night informing me that Makuba is having a very large and very fabulous warehouse liquidation sale. If you do not know, Makuba is the most wondrous ribbon shop if you did not watch that Garment District vlog from a couple of months ago. It's full of glorious ribbons that are very expensive normally. So I am very excited to explore and see what sorts of woeful damage can be done. So I've worked with White Cotton Lawn quite a few times before in previous projects as you may or may not have seen, um, and every time the White Cotton Lawn that I have purchased has come from this shop, Fabrics Garden. They have wonderful cotton lawn, they have large quantities of it, and they have it at very affordable prices. Oh my goodness, this just scared me so hard. obtained. I just ran into a lovely woman called Fran who watches the vlogs. I did not want to be on the vlog and that's perfectly okay, but hi Fran. It was nice to meet you. So I was under the impression that the sale just applied to the little bit in the front, the clearance stuff. However, it turns out it's actually, there's a percentage off of literally everything. So I'm about to achieve my long lost dreams of obtaining some of this absolutely stunning lace. Just, oh my God, look, 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 look. <sighs> Goodbye, all of my life savings. I literally spent an hour in Makuba and I bought some lace. I didn't spend as much money as I thought I was going to but I did a little bit of damage, so.
So here is the damage. It is not quite as bad as I thought it would be. I got two yards of this lace that would hypothetically be nice for something 17th century that I have absolutely no plans to do anytime in the near future, but I bought it anyway because it's pretty. I also got five yards of this, which also, once again, I do not have any plans for. I will make a blouse out of this or something. I also bought this. In theory, I had it in my head that, you know, insertion lace and edging lace for something, probably a blouse. All of these laces are synthetic, so these would hypothetically be for a modern historically inspired blouse project that maybe I'll get around to doing one day. This is for Noelle. This will probably be explained in one of Noelle's vlogs sometime in the near future when this arrives at her merry sewing room. This was actually on proper clearance, so all of these were 30% off their regular price. By the way, Makuba is not closing. This whole clearance thing is not because they're closing, so all of these things will still be available if I decide that I need more of them in the future. So that's why I did not buy like masses amounts of stuff because it will all be there. This is just plain lightweight cotton tape. This was $25 for the entire roll of it. I think there's like 120 yards on here, which is super cool. I will definitely use lots and lots and lots of this, including for the chemise a la rain project, I do need some drawstring tape. So for the waistband and the underbust and the neckline. So this will definitely serve for our more immediate project. And speaking of this chemise a la rain, why don't I actually show you the actual purpose of this trip, what I bought for that. So here is the cotton lawn that I got. I bought 10 yards of this. As you can see, it's very, very lightweight, very, very sheer, but this will be quite densely gathered and I will also have a heavier cotton underlining underneath it, which incidentally I did not buy. I know I will have enough cotton in my stash, definitely for an underbodice, but I may need a lining for the skirt as well. More to come on that. For the contrasting bit, I bought this. Wow, it's turning out much more red on camera than it actually is in real life. I only got half a yard of this because it's silk satin and it was expensive. So there is a shiny satin side. There's also a less shiny side. I may use the less shiny side just because I feel like it's a bit more casual for day wear. Although this will be a whole separate just ribbon sash. It will be super simple and I will make that decision when I come to it. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this in the wash because it is a cotton and needs to be pre-washed because generally the rule is why don't we turn up the brightness? In general, it is always wise to wash the fabrics that you plan to wash as an actual garment. So washable fabrics such as cotton and linen, you do want to pre-wash the entire length of yardage before you actually make it up into a garment so that it shrinks and warps and does whatever before you actually make it into a thing. Wool and silk, obviously, you do not wash, so you don't have to worry about that. So this is going for a clean, and then when this is out of the washing machine and it's all nice and dry and pressed, then we will go ahead and start making this into a little frock. So somehow I managed to make it through art school without doing the one thing that every single career practices class tells you you need to do in order to get a job, and that is to build a website to actually showcase your work. So I suppose it's probably time that I finally get on that. Thank Thanks to Squarespace, who make this daunting and complicated process surprisingly simple, even for technologically illiterate, time-traveling folk like me, with thousands of customizable pre-made designs, loads of practical features including image galleries, video integration, social media linking, mailing lists and newsletters, e-commerce, and even podcast support. Head to squarespace.com to try out your free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Bernadette Banner for 10% off your first purchase. And so Whilst I wait for these 10 yards of beautiful cotton lawn to pre-wash and dry out, I will thus be proceeding to begin experimenting with my own website endeavors, finally. So more to come on that, as well as the building of the actual dress, of course. I do hope you shall stick around. And if not, cool. Anon, friends.